Hello, and welcome to The Lucy Lou Show, the fueling station for your mind, business, and life. And now, here's your host, Lucy Lou. Hello, hello, beautiful souls. I am here wishing you love, hope, and everlasting joy and happiness. Thank you for tuning in. One of the things that I notice is as we're going through quarantine, everyone around me seemed to be starting on TikTok. If that's you, screenshot right now and tag me on Instagram at M-S-L-U-C-Y-L-I-U. And if you've started TikTok already, you can also find me at the same handle, M-S-L-U-C-Y-L-I-U. So today we're going to talk about TikTok. What is it? Who's on it? What should you post if you're a business owner? And how can we help you grow and monetize TikTok? This is why I invited my guest today, Rachel Peterson, who is a top social media marketer and consultant. She is a TikTok expert, and she helps entrepreneurs build their dream business with social media. So without further ado, here's Rachel. Thank you so much for being here, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me, Lucy. This is going to be amazing. Uh, Yeah, so TikTok used to be for very young kids, and the demographics has changed so much. So how is it different now, and who's on it today? Yeah, so it's changed quite a bit, which is interesting. Um, There's actually nearly 1 billion monthly active users on TikTok. And this is the part that really surprises a lot of people. Nearly 30% of that 1 billion users is over the age of 30. So that means there's like the size of the United States population of people over the age of 30 on TikTok. And it's continuing to grow as TikTok intentionally brings on athletes and celebrities that attract an older demographic. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, it is. So what are some of the things that we should consider before starting on TikTok? Yeah, great question. So the very first thing is, first and foremost, are you already stretched too thin on social media? And I know that that might seem like a weird question. Like I'm almost discouraging people from being on the platform. But the truth is a lot of people kind of post on a lot of platforms and feel like they're not getting any results. And so this is going to sound kind of crazy, but I'm a huge fan of actually pruning your social media platforms. So if you're posting on Instagram and Medium and you're like, I'm just not seeing any traction. It's like crickets all the time. Maybe it's time to say, you know, I'm going to take a little break from Instagram and Twitter and really focus on something new where I have unlimited viral potential. Another great thing to consider is do I have a person who can be like the figure of my, whether it's you yourself or a team member in marketing, you want to have kind of what we call an attractive character at the front of your business. Now that doesn't mean that they have to be physically attractive. It means that there's someone that's likable or interesting or has a personality that others can relate with. So those are the first two really big things that I ask business owners before I let them know, Hey, I think TikTok would be a good fit, but there is a process of pruning that needs to happen than usually for most people first. So what should you post if you're a business owner? You don't want to just be posting dance moves all day, right? Right. You know, I will say that I post a lot of videos of me dancing and that may be confusing for some people because they're like, is that what I have to do? The reason I post dancing videos is because it's my personality. I really enjoy dancing. I like singing. I like having fun. So those are kind of like my personality sprinkled into the platform. But the videos that actually consistently perform for our business actually have very little dancing in them whatsoever. You don't need to dance in order to have success on TikTok. You just need to separate the trending videos and the trending dances from evergreen content that can move your business forward. So what would you consider some of the good evergreen content? Yeah. So there's a lot of different types of evergreen content. One of the simple ways that I recommend people come up with their first set of evergreen content, this will get you hooked, is to first and foremost, create a list of 10 questions that you get all the time. What are those 10 questions? Because once you can answer those 10 questions in evergreen videos, 
then you're going to unlock a whole new world where maybe it doesn't reach millions of views, but instead you bring in 100 targeted prospects where you're like, oh, this is like where the actual gold is. So valuing every single interaction on the platform as a lead versus just trying to be the next TikTok celebrity can really shift the way that you see TikTok as a business owner. Mm -hmm. So for someone who's just starting on TikTok, what are your best advice to get their first 1000 followers like super fast? Because 1000 (laughs) seems to be the mark to get, right? Yeah, 1000 is really special because that's where you really unlock the ability to go live. I will say the first 1000 followers on TikTok is the most challenging with 10,000 kind of being this like interesting tipping point. Once you hit 10,000, you see a tipping point that's really powerful. But the first 1000 is the hardest because you're learning the platform. You're kind of starting to figure out the ropes a little bit. You're finding your groove. Um, But a couple tips that are really helpful, first and foremost, is to understand the rules and culture of the platform, both the literal rules, but also the unspoken rules. It has its own personality. It's a very interesting platform. And I highly recommend that people honestly spend some time on the platform understanding what it's all about before they just jump in and create content that maybe feels right for uh, Instagram or for YouTube. It's totally different. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the other practices that you use to grow on TikTok? Yeah. So there's a couple more things that I really recommend. First and foremost, it's consistency. And I know we hear that about every single platform, but for example, like last week I had a really low energy week and I needed to focus a hundred percent on these offers and summits and things that we were putting out there. So I didn't put out any TikToks. And what's crazy is it takes about a couple days to get that traction going again. Whereas if I just put out one video or two videos per day, I would have kept the consistency going of my account. You want to really commit to consistency, even more important than frequency is consistency, which is interesting. You want to have a regular posting schedule. It doesn't have to be the same time every day, but you want people to know that they can expect to see you regularly, that you're not just posting and ghosting. Mm -hmm. So how do you go viral on TikTok? How is it possible? So there's a couple of different um, ways to go viral. Um, My personal favorite is to honestly, first and foremost, build a loyal base of followers. This is social proof. This is your early squad. They're the most powerful people because they're going to hype up every single video that you do and add that social proof so that it's never a lonely video. So every time that you get someone who comments on one of your videos, comment back, ask them a question, maybe even follow the first person who comments on your videos. That early squad is a really important part of going viral. Another thing that I recommend is understanding that going viral isn't necessarily the metric that most business owners are going to want to go by. While going viral is awesome, it can also sometimes bring in an audience that isn't the right target market for you. So going mini viral can be a great standard to hold versus going full on viral. But the trends are generally speaking where you're going to see those viral videos, or if you can marry a trending dance or something that you see a challenge with evergreen educational content for your industry, it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. So how do you monetize your audience on TikTok? Yeah, there's several different ways. So I like to see TikTok as a top of funnel, front end, unlimited traffic driver. So I use several different methods to monetize, including driving people to like lead magnets and master classes, selling people straight into my programs. We've even done DM outreach over Instagram, how people reach out to me on Instagram from TikTok, and then also driving people to my YouTube channel, which is another top of funnel strategy delivers value and builds a relationship. Do you need to get verified on TikTok like some of the other platforms? Really good question. I will say that TikTok is very difficult to get in touch with for the average user. Even people who have been, you know, verified on other platforms, it's difficult to get in touch with TikTok corporate at first. Once you're in, you're in, which is awesome. But you don't necessarily get that automatic blue check mark just because you're verified on other platforms, though it does help at times. So you don't need to get verified, but for celebrities, there are content creator teams that support them with making sure they they get that verification early on. But TikTok is definitely a little more picky about verifications than let's say even a Facebook profile is. 
Mm -hmm. So what's one thing you wish you had known when you began? Yeah. So one thing I wish I had known when I first began was that it was going to take a while to find my legs. Um, I definitely did things the hard way when I first got onto TikTok. I learned a lot through trial and keyword error, lots of error. And so the interesting thing is I wish that I had known that a little bit of time spent researching and learning, although there wasn't really a benchmark for learning, that would pay off massively. And so as I've learned to dissect the different trends on the platform and what's performing now, I've been sure to like digest them and give them back to especially the TikTok Academy users because I want them to be able to just jump on in and create without that trial and error that I went through. It was a little bit painful. So if you look back at my early videos, you'll see there's a lot of cringy content. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are scared of getting on TikTok because they don't want to overwhelm themselves with too much to handle. They're already posting on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. Why do you think people believe that it's overwhelming? Yeah, I will be honest. I think a lot of people, and this is going to be a little bit of tough love. I think a lot of people aren't necessarily focused on any one platform. It's kind of like they're almost like checking platforms off of a list. They're like, check, check, check. And so by the time they finish with all of their content, they're like, oh, I've done so much, but it wasn't actually effective or moving the needle because they don't know what the strategy is with their social media. And that's why I'm such a huge fan of hopping onto platforms where there is more longevity as you figure out your social media strategy. So for example, TikTok, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, podcasts and blogs, those are some of my favorite mediums for creating content because it has a longer shelf life. So as you're adjusting your strategy and figuring out where you're going to funnel your traffic to, the posts can still perform, which is really, really powerful. So it gives you a little more time to learn versus on Facebook or Instagram, sometimes a post can be dead in a few hours. So I'm a huge fan of really concentrating your efforts where you're going to see the greatest return. But if you're just posting on social media for the sake of posting, maybe it's time to kind of prune some of the social media platforms and get ready to really dominate on just a few. As a million dollar business owner, what is a quote that you go by? Ooh, you know, there's a book I read and it really explains, there's a quote kind of in my own head that we go through a lot, which is just publish now, optimize later. But a great way to like summarize that is from Michael Masterson and that's ready, fire, aim. And I really love that phrase because it kind of explains publish now, optimize later, get stuff out there uh, and, and learn as you go, but put out videos, even if you don't understand everything about the platform, but then continue to grow and evolve. That's a key. I dissect everything. We dissect what worked, what didn't, what we could do differently, which keywords performed, what, even what trends we see with like lighting and the background, which is really, really powerful. So I'm a huge fan of really pushing content out there and then stepping back and analyzing it. But then optimizing all of our strategy moving forward from that point on. Wow. Thank you for all your information and inspiration. So where can our listeners connect with you online if they want to learn more about TikTok and other social media platforms? Yeah, there's a few different places where people can learn more. Um, I have a free Facebook group that's really powerful. We've got, I think, 6,600 members, which is kind of fun. And you can find that at TikTok. And that's T-I-K-T-O-K, growthhacks.com. Or I have a powerful freebie, and this is a three uh, a threefold pack that basically has my niched strategy for hashtags that helped me to grow by $52,000 in one month. The A to Z of how to get started with TikTok, which is really helpful for a lot of people. And to your point earlier, Lucy, your first 1,000 followers on TikTok, a how-to training. So you can get that by going to tiktokstarterpack.com forward slash free. Ooh, lots of goodies. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a blast. To all the beautiful souls listening, thank you for joining me on this episode of The Lucy Lou Show. When I'm not podcasting, I am coaching high-achieving women in life transitions, getting unstuck, 
kissing overwhelmed goodbye and living a more joyful and fulfilled life through strategic goal setting and mindset transformation. It would mean the world to me if you subscribe, rate, or share this with a friend. And don't forget to join me for the next episode. Remember, there is always a way and more blessings are coming your way. For free resources and show notes, head over to lucylucoaching.com. 